hi everyone. Good evening. It's uh, Wednesday night again. It's seven o'clock here in the UK, and it's another Dream Whiskies Facebook Live broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hope you are all well. Uh, what have we got lined up for you this evening? Well, um, just to uh, be clear, it was St. Patrick's Day yesterday, but because we do our broadcast on a Wednesday night, we've decided to do our St. Patrick's Day nod, if you like, our theme tonight rather than yesterday, so we're sort of stretching it out a little bit. The other thing that I'd like to say before I tell you uh, what else is on the go for this evening is this, and that is for the next sort of half hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, however long this broadcast runs for, this is a corona-free zone. So it's the last time I'm going to mention it in this broadcast, but just to say, while all this madness and craziness is going on, this is an opportunity for you to escape with us, with me, just for a little bit and have some whiskey related fun. So let's see who has joined us. Uh, first up is Paul. How are you doing, Paul? Always good to see you there. And uh, Barry, uh, as ever, Barry not here. Good to see that he's not here as usual. And Chris, how are you doing? Kieran, good to see you as well. Good to see all of you that are joining us. Remember, if it's your first time joining us, Talk to us in the box. I'll respond to you as much as I can. If you're a regular, well, you know how it works. Just keep in touch with us. Uh, and, and before we do anything, let's make sure that we have something on the go in terms of a toast for this evening. Now, because we've got a St. Patrick's Day theme, albeit a day late, it's all going to be Irish whiskey tonight. And I thought if we're going to go for Irish whiskey, we might as well go for the biggest selling Irish whiskey on the planet, which, of course, is Jameson. So uh, no Irish whiskey snobbery here. I love all the fabulous Irish whiskies out there, but I love Jameson as well. So uh, just gonna pour myself a little drop. Remember, if you're having a drink with us, tell us what you got. Uh, I don't know if you can actually post pictures of yourself in the comments box, but if you can, show us what you're drinking. But I'm just gonna get a little drop of Jameson's on the go. And I'm gonna tell you actually something interesting about Jameson's as we get into our broadcast this evening. Who else is with us? Cheryl, always good to see you there. Uh, need you there. Need you there. You're like one of the one of the absolute keys to us running this on a regular basis. Richie, uh, a glass of Teelings. You've got a really nice, fabulous uh, Irish whiskey on the go there. Good to see that. Thank you, Richie. Uh, Kevin, how are you doing? Good to see you, Jeff, as well. Kate, uh, good evening to you, Kate. Uh, Sherry has joined us, and great to see you, Sherry. Barry, what's going on there? I see you still have last week's question up. Ah, I've done it again, Barry. Okay, I'm going to do the same as I did last week, Barry. So the question for tonight, which I'm going to get to in a second, I will switch that on the website instantaneously as I finish this broadcast. So thank you for giving me the heads up. I even left myself a note to make sure I did it before the broadcast, and I didn't do it. So look, cheers to you all. Let me know what you've got on the go. Uh, this is a Jameson. We've got a lot of stuff on the go for you this evening, but, but first... Cheers, and happy St. Patrick's Day for yesterday. So, mm. always loving it, actually. Soft, smooth, rounded, love it. Loving the Jamesons. All right, this is what we got for you tonight. As a special treat, uh, we always have a cocktail or a couple of cocktails of the week. I decided to do three St. Patrick's-themed cocktails for you tonight. So if you're loving the Irish whiskey theme, if you want something that Relates to St. Patrick's, we've got three cocktails up, uh, up for you this evening. I'm uh, going to be sharing some Irish whiskey-related facts with you. Um, we've got our quiz coming up, by the way, our quiz at the end. But you remember, you need to be aware of all the stuff I'm telling you throughout the broadcast so you can answer the questions in the quiz. Plus, because we've got a number of people that are with us who aren't our members but are just sort of dropping in and joining us, um, I'm going to be sort of banging some questions out to you as well, and you can just answer them for a bit of fun as it goes. Um, what else? I need to show you the prize that we've got up. And I need to tell you who our winners were from last week. Before I tell you who last week's winners are, who else is with us? Uh, Bob is uh, on the Jameson as well. Richard Webster, uh, Bushmills 10 year old, drinking naked grouses, Paul. Kieran, you've got a Glen Alaki, liking that. The port would finish, that's cool. Uh, Sherry, good to see you too. And a Lafroy 10 on the go for Barry, who's not there but of course, always is, always good to see you. Right, last week's winners. So remember, we now announce them first on this broadcast. Two winners from last week, our main VIP whiskey competition. 
where the winner can choose whatever whiskey from our prize library on the website. It could be this, for example, it could be a bottle of this, or it could be one of 50 plus other whiskies that we're giving away as well. Uh, the winner of last week's, and it finished at midnight last night, by the way, so our next competition is already on the go. Last week's winner is Andrew Wynn. Andrew, are you out there? Are you with us? Andrew, you are the winner. If you're not, I'll be in touch with you by email anyway. Andrew's in Stoke-on-Trent. He is the winner of last week's whiskey competition and the winner of last week's spot prize giveaway. For those who are new to joining us in this broadcast, we do a spot prize giveaway for members as part of this broadcast. If you're not a member, it doesn't matter. You can still play and have some fun. But the actual prize we had up for grabs last week was a Penderin. That's a Welsh whiskey tasting kit. So two small bottles of Penderin Welsh whiskey plus a tasting glass. And the winner of that is Lupka. Lupka Kot Manikova from Slovakia. And I think Lupka is often with us. I don't know if you're with us yet, uh, Lupka, but uh, congratulations to you. Uh, how are we doing here? Bruce, hi, Paul, the members having a whiskey sour with a small shot of strawberry margarita mixing it. Wow. Okay, Jane's with us. Jane was our guest from last week. Good to see you joining us. Kate's got again, Farclas, 10 year old. Uh, happy Wednesday back at you. Mark Coyle uh, working, so cola for Mark. Okay. Uh, Barry, uh, congrats to Andrew. Uh, Dennis is with us, Charlie Thompson. Is that Charlie Thompson that I know or Charlie Thompson that has the same name as someone that I know? But anyway, Glamorangi for you. Uh, John, what you got? You've got the corona uh, quarantine in the States. Yeah, John. Okay, so this is all about non-corona. So uh, we got the quarantines. We're all being shut down. And tonight, thank you for joining us because we just want to be happy thinking about whiskey for about an hour. So Good that you're with us, really pleased that you're in there. Uh, look, uh, I'm not sure if you have spotted this yet, but anyway, Paul, uh, what are you saying there? This is Paul Musson, Musson, hi Paul, first time live and enjoying your Maker's Mark. Good, that's what we like to hear. All right, so as we go through our broadcast, I'm gonna share some uh, St. Patrick's related facts with you. Uh, I'm also going to share uh, some just general Irish whiskey related facts for you. You need to be aware of what I'm saying because questions will come up towards the end of our broadcast where if you are a member, you can win the following prize, which I'm about to show you. If you're not a member, you can just play for some fun uh, or you can actually sign up to be a member on our site, which is, uh, has a 30 day free trial. So whatever way you wanna do, you can play, you can just have some fun. But let me show you what we've got up for grabs as our spot prize giveaway for this week. And of course, it's a bottle of this. I don't know if you can see, actually if I put it in an angle, that's better. So a bottle of this, this is Bushmills Irish Whiskey. This is a fabulous whiskey, I love uh, Bushmills. And we're giving away a bottle to the person that answers our quiz questions correct tonight and then gets drawn out of the hat as the, as the one that, uh, that answered them correctly and then got drawn. So that's our VIP spot prize. Be aware of the facts and the stuff that I'm gonna tell you tonight. And before I get into our first cocktail, I'm gonna give you our first facts for this evening. All right, so. First of all, uh, a St. Patrick's Day fact for you. Uh, and the question is, uh, why, uh, uh, why green, right? Why is green associated with St. Patrick's Day? Uh, and in actual fact, was it always green? Well, look, listen to this. This is what I dug out. And this is uh, it's sort of interesting, really. And it says that although green dominates the celebrations these days, actually, the original color that was associated with St. Patrick was blue. You'll find it, for example, in the earliest depictions of him in art. Uh, he would always be wearing blue garments. And actually, apparently, the blue color also appears on ancient Irish flags. Like really old Irish flags will have, I believe, still have green, but also blue as well. And that color at the time wasn't even just known as blue. It was known as St. Patrick's blue. Uh, when it changed to green, I'm not entirely sure, but interesting. So originally, blue, not green. That is our first fact. You might want to remember that because there is a good chance I'm going to ask you a question about that towards the end of our broadcast. Um, and I've got a whiskey fact for you as well, an Irish whiskey fact. And actually, it's the word whiskey. So Irish whiskey, when we spell whiskey, is spelt with an E. So W-H-I-S-K-E-Y. Uh, and that is also the same as you would spell it if you were talking about an American whiskey or a bourbon, where a Scotch whiskey is spelt without the E, W-H-I-S-K-Y. The question is, why? And a lot of people actually don't know this. They know that there is a difference in the spelling, but they don't know why. And it goes back 
to the original Gaelic words for whiskey. And the Scottish Gaelic word for whiskey, when translated, was translated slightly differently to the Irish Gaelic word for whiskey. So when the Irish one was translated, it ended up with an E in it. And when the Scottish one was translated, it ended up without an E in it, and those have stuck. And that's why it's without an E if you're talking about Scotch whiskey, and it's with an E if you're talking about Irish whiskey. But also American whiskey, and that's because, of course, Irish settlers going to the United States or going to America in the 1700s took their spelling with them, and there you go. All makes sense. All right, let me move this out of the way, and we're going to get to our first cocktail, which is called a Blarney Juice. A Blarney Juice. Obviously, we're looking for something that's going to be green. Let me just have another taste of this. Uh, but we wanted something that, that also had that feel of Irish whiskey about it. And um, what we're going to do is going to make this as our first cocktail. I'm just going to get a glass out. And there are various ways of getting green into your cocktail. So you can actually use green liqueurs like creme de menthe. In fact, I've got, uh, got another cocktail with a splash of that coming up a little bit later. Uh, or you can use Maduri, or there's a load of green liqueurs actually that you can use, or you can bring together some colors that will hopefully turn it green, and that's what we're gonna do with this one. Before I dive in, just a few more hellos, a few congratulations there. Adrian Bain, how you doing? A cup of tea, how did that happen? No Corona here for Jane, just whiskey. Sherry's really enjoying that, that's what we like to hear. Bruce, what are you doing? Whiskey kills the coronavirus, right? I don't know, I just think we should just keep drinking it and see what happens. Uh, Karina, good to see you, partying with us. Cliff, how you doing? Who else is with us here? Ah, no, Creme de Mont says my favorite person in the world. Yes, Creme de Mont, but only a tiny bit, and that's not in this cocktail here. All right, so first things first. We're gonna take our shaker, and we're gonna add uh, some ingredients here. Now, the first ingredients that we want to add, of course, is our Irish whiskey. All of these cocktails tonight are based on Irish whiskey, and it's gonna be Jameson's. So I'm going to add, uh, and I'm not measuring this because I'm just doing it by eye, but I'm adding around about 25 mil. So what would be a British English shot of, of whiskey? The next thing that I'm going to add is some vodka. And I'm putting half as much vodka in. So the vodka is actually just going to be around about 12 and a half mil. And then I'm also going to add some gin. And this might sound really strange that I'm putting gin and vodka with whiskey, but let me tell you something. And also, again, about 12 and a half mil. So let me tell you something about these three different ingredients. Essentially, they all start life as the very same thing. So all of these are distilled from grain. You have a neutral spirit, and if you do nothing else with it, you keep it as vodka. If you actually put it back in a still and you put in juniper and other botanicals and you distill it again, it becomes gin. Or if you just distill it as a neutral spirit, like a vodka, but then you put it in a barrel, and then it ages, and the color changes, it becomes whiskey. So they are all related, even though you wouldn't necessarily think that you would blend them together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of blue curacao. Now blue curacao, for those of you who are not sure, I guess you've all seen it, but yes, blue in color, but taste of orange, made from the bitter oranges from the island of curacao. So orange flavor, a bit like Grand Marnier, same sort of thing, same sort of idea, but this is blue. And we are gonna add, again, about 12 mil, 12 and a half mil of that, but I'm gonna be putting in a little bit more later on. Now you can see at the moment, it's not looking very green, it's sort of looking blue, and to get the green color, and actually to give it a longer, fruitier flavor, I'm gonna add orange juice to it. And I'm going to pour in around about 50 to 60 ml of orange juice. And what you'll see is it starts to go turquoise. And then as I add a little bit more, it starts to look more green than turquoise. So we have just about all our ingredients in there. Next thing we're going to do is going to shake it. So I'm going to take the other half of my shaker and I'm going to add some ice. I'm then going to pour this in with the ice. Close it up and give it a good shake. So let's give it a shake. Oh, by the way, if you're doing this with me, shake along. And actually, if you're not doing this with me, shake along anyway, just pretend. So give it a good shake, mix it up, chill it down, change that color, starting to look green, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my strainer because I don't want the ice, and I'm gonna pour this all into our glass. Here we go, and you can see now we've got that fabulous green color. So let's bring this up a little bit like so. 
That's good. Let's just pop these to the side for a moment. Uh, but we're not finished because I want to add a little bit of blue in the bottom there. And the idea of the blue in the bottom is to nod our head to the idea that St. Patrick actually was associated with the color blue rather than the color green originally. So I'm going to take a bit more of the blue curacao, but this time the idea is to pour it really gently just down the side of the glass. And that should settle, and I hopefully you can see, it starts to settle in the bottom. So you can see that a little bit now, the blue. And by the way, you can drink it like that, or when you get it, you can sort of mix it up. So let me just get that out of the way, Let's get these out of the way as well. So we're sort of done, we're sort of done, but a drink like this definitely needs a little bit of garnish. So what I'm grabbing here is one of these, I guess you know what that is. That's an orange. Who's talking to us, by the way? Who's there? Cliff? Hi, Jane. Oh, you're all talking amongst yourselves. Andy, saving my whiskey for later. Fair enough. Uh, Cliff saying, can someone move the camera to the right to see if the cutie is in? Ah, oh, you're flirting with Jane. I, this is how, I don't even know how this is going on. While I'm making a, a drink, you guys are flirting. This is ridiculous. Talk to me. Don't talk to each other, otherwise I feel left out. Or I'm going to have to get Jane back here, which we've already spoken about. Actually, I think if it wasn't for what's going on at the moment, Jane might have forced her way back in here tonight anyway. Right, look, orange. Take the orange, let's put this up here, and let me get my knife. Okay, I've just realized I don't have my knife. I've just realized I don't have my knife. So what I'm gonna do is to avoid disappearing out of the screen, I'm gonna tell you how you should have done this. So the idea is you cut a slice of this, and you just roll it up, you pin it, with a cocktail stick and just drop it, just sit it in the top so it looks nice. So you can see the color orange obviously would go nicely with the green. But there we go, this is our first cocktail. This is our, our Blarney juice and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's our first of our green cocktails just for tonight. Now, actually I said I didn't have a knife, but uh, as if by magic, uh, suddenly a very large knife appears out of nowhere. So I'm gonna do this for you. So let me just cut this down quickly, and then I'm gonna take another slice like so. Anyone wondering how that got to me? Uh, your guesses, please, how that arrived. Any guesses how that arrived? Awesome drink, by the way, says Bruce. Gonna be making one of those. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna to have to ask you guys about uh, something to do with Bruce. Uh, we need to come up with a title for him, and I'll explain to you why in a second. So those of you who are with us regularly know that Bruce joins us every week. He's been with Dream Whiskey. He's a really good supporter of ours for a long time. And uh, um, I want to give him a, a title, and I'll explain to you in a second. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just sort of folding that up and pinning it, actually in the shape of an S. So can you see what I'm doing here? Let me, if I bring it a little bit closer, here we go. So can you see that? So it's like the shape of an S. And all you have to do is just sit it across the top of the drink like so. And actually, I might just lift this up to give you a quick look. Can you see that? There we go. And that is our Blarney juice. All right, that's cocktail number one. Let's just put this over here for a second. Let's get this out of the way and pop it down there. And I'm going to take a taste. Uh, I don't want to drink too much out of it, but I'm just going to take a taste with a straw just so that I can remind myself how gorgeous this is. So it's light, it's fruity, obviously the green is good for St. Patrick's Day, but the other thing about this is that the Irish whiskey just blends beautifully and smoothly. And you might want to put a tealing in there, but I would say don't put a tealing in there. Actually don't put anything other than the Jameson's because the Jameson works just perfectly with this. The flavor of that and the flavors that are in this gives you the perfectly balanced drink. So that is cocktail number one. Uh, before we move on, Let's share a few more facts with you. Let me open up my iPad before I do that. Jane's saying, how's the bloke in the corner? Because a lot of people were saying that the bloke in the corner from last week, who was he? <coughs> Excuse me, by the way, that cough is not coronavirus. Uh, who is the bloke in the corner? Is he with me? Is he with Jane? In fact, they even had somebody during the week, I think it might have even been Barry, who said, is it? Jane's husband. Well, who knows? All I know is he's still sitting there. He's still there. How are you doing, bloke in the corner? He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk, but he's doing just fine. 
Uh, Robert, too early for whiskey here, but good to get ideas for tonight. Yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, unless you want to start drinking early. Drink looks stunning, says Karina Bruce, a leprechaun bought it to you. Yes, indeed. Uh, Paul, your wife wants to knife you. <laughs> so you met my wife, right? Okay, I'm getting that. Stacy, can you ship that to me? We'd love to do that. Uh, he'll leave it on the doorstep. What we got going on here? My 11-year-old likes the look of the first one. Yeah, I, I, that's the problem. She is definitely going to have to wait for, for a while, for sure. Uh, what's this? Uh, Sherry, do you rent him out? What, what is this now? You're starting to pimp me. What the hell? Okay, right. Uh, before we go on to our next cocktail, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to share uh, a few more facts with you because remember, these facts give you clues to the answers in the upcoming competition that comes up towards the end of our broadcast. Just moving a few other bits into place here for our next drink as well. All right. So who was St. Patrick? So this is interesting. Uh, you know, I don't make out that I'm any kind of expert when it comes to St. Patrick. Uh, you know, I was, I was sort of looking out myself today as well. But I found this really interesting. So I'm going to read out to you exactly what I pulled up. Uh, and remember, there may be a question on this. So, much of what is known about St. Patrick's life has been interwoven with folklore and legend. Historians generally believe that St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, was actually born in Britain and not Ireland, near the end of the fourth century. At the age of 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and sold as a slave to Celtic priest in Northern Ireland. After toiling for six years as a shepherd, he escaped back to Britain, but he eventually returned to Ireland as a Christian missionary. Now, for me, that's sort of mind-blowing. For you, that is an interesting fact, because I might ask you a question about that towards the end of our broadcast. So did you hear everything that I said? He wasn't actually born in Ireland. He was born in Britain. The fourth century he went across. Let's see. There is a chance that I could be asking you a question about that. Right. Barry, as if you don't know. What's going on here with you guys? You're all just sort of talking too much amongst yourself. I guess that's some kind of success, really, if you're talking amongst yourself. Remember, tell me what you've got on the go as well. Uh, I've still got my Jameson's on the go. And in a second, we're going to go into our second cocktail. Let's just have a little sip of this again. Mm. More than a little sip. Let's keep that there. And let's just pop this, keep it in shop, pop that out the way. So if you were with us last week when everybody's favorite guest, Jane, was with us as well, you will also know that I made a version of a julep. And um, what we did was we took this raspberry, not raspberry, I kept on saying raspberry last week, we took this rhubarb liqueur, we added it to, to what is essentially a traditional julep and we came up with this sort of ra uh, a rhubarb version of a julep. Um, this week, what I'm doing for you is something we call a leprechaun smash. So a smash is related to a julep. It's like a smaller version of it in a way. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm adding something which is going to give it more of that green color and is also going to, uh, uh, I guess, um, well, for a start, it's going to add the ingredient that, that's already been mentioned that people perhaps don't like. But we're only going to put it in a small amount. And it's going to turn what would ordinarily be an Irish whiskey smash into a leprechaun smash. Really easy to make, but you need to have fresh ingredients. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glass. You need a glass like this, like a rocks glass, old-fashioned style, you know, whiskey glass type thing. Make sure you've got those. Bruce, what's going on there? Make it for your daughter. Are you talking to each other? So you're talking to Andy. Make it for your ginger ale, lime, and soda. Liking that, actually. Non-alcoholic cocktails, not just great for kids, but great for all of us, I guess, when we're not drinking whiskey. Okay, so you got your glass. Uh, first thing that I want you to do is to take some fresh mint. So I've got some fresh mint leaves here, and I'm just going to pluck a number of them off, and I'm going to put them in the glass. So let's just pull a bunch of them there. So I reckon about six to eight good-sized mint leaves, something like that. Let's just take a few more. I love the smell of fresh mint, you know, the aroma that you get. It can sit in a glass like this for a little while, uh, but the moment you start plucking the leaves off, wow, does it release those oils and incredible aroma. Okay, that's enough for me. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some sugar. The sugar is going to be in there for a couple of reasons. One is that the sugar is going to sweeten the drink so we get the right balance. But the second reason is that actually the granules in our sugar 
when we muddle this in a second, are going to help to bruise down the surface of the, the mint leaves and, and, and essentially help them release their oil so we get more of the flavor and the aroma from the mint in the drink. Next thing, I'm going to take some Jameson's whiskey, but just enough to make it wet. So I'm talking about, I don't know, maybe 10 ml, not more than that really, just enough to give us some uh, opportunity to work that in with each other. Uh, before we go forward, Bruce is still, uh, video pause back again. Is that everybody? Hopefully not. All right, uh, here we go. So, take your pestle. So this is a pestle, this is a wooden one, but anything you can, and start to break this down. And what I want to do is I want to, I guess, get the sugar to dissolve slightly with the whiskey that's in there. Uh, but while I'm doing it, I'm also pressing down on the mint leaves to really smell the mint releasing their oil and aroma. Incredible actually, so fragrant. Keep going at that for a little while. Don't, don't break down the mint so you end up with little bits of torn mint in your drink, but press on them while you're breaking down the sugar. And I can see the sugar is starting to dissolve nicely, and the mint is breaking down enough that it's not turning into little bits and pieces. And the smell is incredible, and I'm just gonna put that in there. Now, next thing we wanna do is we wanna add some ice to the glass. But not whole bits of ice, we need crushed ice. I've already crushed my ice in advance of doing this broadcast for you guys. Um, but easy enough to do. I mean, you can do it if you've got, if you've got a refrigerator that does it, then great. Uh, if you haven't, you can just take ice and wrap it up in a tea towel and just give it a whack and that'll break it down. Anything like that will be fine. So I'm going to bring the ice up to about there. Uh, I'm going to pour the Jamesons in pretty much until it comes up to the level of the ice. So you can see we've actually got quite a lot of whiskey in this. Then I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm gonna to start to stir. So by stirring, I'm bringing all the sugar off the bottom of the glass. I'm also bringing the mint into play as well. And what's happening is that it's like an instant infusion. So this whiskey now is completely infused with the flavor and the oils of the mint. You've got the incredible aroma, and then the sweetness from the sugar, which we already started to dissolve, creates that balance. And also the sweetness also lifts the flavor of the mint. Now, we're not quite finished with this smash. I want to add a little more ice, because obviously, as you've seen, once you start stirring the crushed ice, it tends to drop a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the last ingredient that's going to get this from an Irish whiskey smash into a leprechaun smash. And that is everyone's favorite. That is everyone except for everyone that hates this, and it's creme de menthe. And I'm gonna tell you why you're gonna like this ingredient in this drink, even if you don't normally like this. A, we're only putting a small amount in. B, it is essentially peppermint, which is what we're trying to get from the fresh mint itself. And we don't put too much in so that it dominates the fresh mint, but we put enough in so that it supports and lifts those flavors. Uh, what else have we got going here? Uh, back to being Billy No Mates, says Mark to me. Yes, sorry, I'm on my own tonight. Yeah, Billy No Mates. But we will look at getting people back, and, and uh, I think Jane's already a favorite with everyone. So I'm adding just a small amount. So that was, I would say, five mil at the moment. I might put a tiny bit more in there if I feel it's necessary. But actually, now I'm doing this, I don't feel it's necessary because I've got enough of that to give the sweetness I want. Uh, the aroma that I want from it without dominating our fresh mint, and of course the colour, which is the key thing here on St. Patrick's Day plus one, uh, and that is the colour of green. So we've got our second green cocktail. Now how would I garnish this? Well, I would always garnish it with a little bit more fresh mint. I'll put a couple of mint leaves in the top. Let's just tuck a few in there. I'm running out of mint to be honest with you because uh, uh, today, I've been playing around with a few drinks, and uh, yeah, and I've used up my mint. Uh, let me put that to the side there. But there we go, and uh, let's have a little taste of this to see how we're doing with this one. So the second of our drinks. And this tastes gorgeous. I mean, this is just sort of a fabulous, uh, uh, not mojito really, but a fabulous um, uh, julep style cocktail, smaller, more powerful, and of course the green, the extra flavor that comes with it uh, for, for St. Patrick's Day. So two of our green cocktails, I'm just gonna try it without, obviously. Mmm, straw, like it now, really like it now. Actually, let me just bring it up to the camera so you can see what's going on here. 
Um, and if you're a sort of julep sort of person, those are the sort of drinks that you like, then give it a go, give it a go. Uh, what else have we got? Kieran, I know it sounds good, can't wait to make this one. Yeah, let me know how you get on with it. Cliff, this would be lovely on a hot summer's day with the ice, yes. Uh, I drank a bottle of that once. A bottle of what, Karina? A bottle of this or a bottle of this? If you drank a bottle of this, then that just makes you a good person. If you drank a bottle of that, I didn't even know it came in bottles. Paul, what are you saying to me? A drink to get a little folk smashed. A few more glasses for big people. Okay. Jane, bet that tasted nice on the way back. <laughs> and Cheryl, of course, making her favorite reference uh, in relation to uh, our creme de month. Uh, tastes like mouthwash. Uh, but I can, I can tell you that this one doesn't taste like mouthwash. It just tastes like peppermint. Mark, how about a mini spud on a cocktail stick? The ones in the tin, for what? What is that? I don't even know what that is, Mark. All right, now before we go to our third cocktail, uh, remember that we've got uh, a competition coming up towards the end of our broadcast. Uh, we've already had our winners, by the way, if you don't know who our winners were for last week. So the winner of our whiskey competition, that's our VIP whiskey competition, who can pick a prize from our prize library. That is Andrew Wynn from Stoke-on-Trent. I don't think Andrew's with us here. Uh, and, and the winner of last week's VIP spot prize giveaway, where we're giving away the Pendarium whiskey tasting set, uh, that's Lubka. And Lubka normally is with us, but I don't see her here tonight. So I'm guessing that, uh, uh, yeah, not quite sure what's going on. Uh, by the way, I said Lubka. I'm assuming Lubka is uh, her. I've always assumed him, but maybe I've got that wrong. So if I have, forgive me, please. Uh, but Lubka, you are the winner. Uh, and again, this week, our competition, just to remind you all, we're giving away of this, a bottle of this. This is our Bushmills uh, Irish whiskey for our St. Patrick's Day themed evening. And I've got another fact for you because we've got our competition questions coming up shortly. So here we go. Uh, another fact for you in relation to uh, St. Patrick, and this is an interesting one because St. Patrick is is believed to have banished all the snakes from Ireland. So this is one of the legends, one of the legends that he stood atop an Irish hillside and banished the snakes from Ireland. Uh, and that was prompting all the serpents to slither away into the seas and drown. But interestingly, uh, when they've looked at the country's fossil record, there are no snakes. There have never been any snakes. Uh, it looks like Ireland never had snakes at any point. Of course, it's surrounded by water as well. Uh, and since that, since the last glacial period, so always been surrounded by water, as far as that is concerned. And before that glacial period, it was covered in ice, which would have been too cold for snakes or any kind of reptile, really. So that whole legend, if you like, about St. Patrick banishing the snakes, I think is just a few people on a few too many whiskeys coming up with stuff. But that's what legends are about. So not dissing any legend, but just giving you some interesting information about it. Uh, Irish whiskey fact for you. In 2018, uh, the fabulous Red Breast 21-year-old whiskey. Now, we've actually given away a bottle of Red Breast 21-year-old uh, in, in previous competitions. Absolutely fabulous whiskey. Always said that it was one of the world's finest whiskies, which is easy to say, but it's not easy to achieve if you think about how many thousands of whiskies there are. But in 2018, when Jim Murray did his 2018 Whiskey Bible, albeit a couple of years ago, it was voted the number two best whiskey in the world. That's an Irish whiskey fact for you. The Red Breast 21 year old, the number two best whiskey of any whiskey of any type of any category in the world in 2018. By the way, I would say to you that Red Breast whiskies as, as a whole are absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, this is uh, a 12 year old cut of strength, which is incredible. I've uh, got the Lustau edition as well, which is a, a really heavy sherry cask whiskey. All fantastic. Who else is talking to me? Nice garnish, says Jane. As a garnish like a cherry, says Mark. I've got some cherries down here. And Red Breast is Robin's favourite. Remember, everyone, talk to me. Say hello. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me if you like the look of the cocktails. Ask me some questions, actually. You want to ask me any questions about either the cocktails we're making or any of our competitions, or what's coming up, any of that. Actually, I've got something really interesting to run by you all uh, before we finish our broadcast this evening. Um, want to make sure that, uh, yeah, I just want to put an idea out to you, to be honest, and uh, see what you think. 
because it might be something that we can all do that is even more interactive as part of our broadcast as well. All right, let's go to our cocktail number three for this evening. And uh, this one I particularly like, it's called a shamrock slipper. It's very different, it's not green. Okay, so we can get away from the idea of green, but it is primarily Irish. In other words, the ingredients are Irish. We've got Irish whiskey in there and we've got Baileys. Put your hand up if you like Baileys. How many of you are putting your hand up now? Uh, maybe you just need to say your hand is up. Who's got their hand up? Uh, nobody's saying that they've got their hand up. So uh, this is what we do. It's a shaking cocktail, and we've got a really nice way of garnishing it, which uh, I sort of come up with. Um, I think it's going to work. We'll have to see, actually, how successful it is, but we'll get to that in a second. So this is going to be served in a martini-style glass. Uh, those of you who know my broadcast will know that I've got quite a few different styles of martini glass, uh, but I tend to like this one here. It's real sort of heavy duty glass, and that's what it's going to go into. Uh, so I'm going to start by taking my mixing glass, and as with the other cocktails, this one is based on Jameson's Irish whiskey, and I'm going to put in 35 ml of the Jameson's. So let's get that in there like so. That's about 35 minutes. Then I'm going to add some Baileys. Now I'm assuming you all know Baileys, the original Irish cream. So this is a cream Irish whiskey plus other flavors going on in there. Touch of coffee, I think. Touch of chocolate, maybe. I know that when, you, when I make sort of homemade Baileys, those are the sort of flavors that I put in. But this is Baileys. I'm going to put the same of the Baileys in. So again, around about 30 to 35 mil. There we go. In a way, at the moment, this is like a, a sort of a, a Baileys on speed, psyched up Baileys, I think we got going on here. Uh, but just a little drop more, that's good. And then, just to finish it off, as if it wasn't decadent enough at the moment, I'm going to add some cream to this. So here we go. And the cream, we're talking about 25 mil of cream. Okay, let's take that off there. So really simple in terms of putting this together, but I guess the, the, the complicated part comes in what I'm gonna try and do when I try to garnish it. So we'll see how that works out. So first things first, we've got that ready to go. Let's just get some ice into my shaker. Sorry as I step out of screen for a second. So I've got ice in here, I'm gonna pour all this in and close it off, and then we're gonna give it another shake. Remember, if you're shaking, shake with me. If not, just shake your body. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. Now, I am going to double strain this. And what I mean is I'm going to strain it with this, as I would normally do, but then I'm also going to pass it through this fine strainer. It's a bit like a tea strainer. And that's because I want this to settle really smoothly in the glass. So you can see that it takes out any tiny little chips of ice. We're going to bring this pretty close to the top. That's good. All right, so that's looking good. Let me just put that down by the side. Now I'm going to do this in a way that hopefully you're going to be able to see. If not, what I will do is I will tip the screen up so that you can see it at the end. But what I'm going to try and do is now put a shamrock uh, dusting of chocolate powder on the surface of the drink. In order to do that, I had to make this. So this is a template. Uh, now, uh, what do you think? Does that look good as a shamrock? Because it took me about five attempts to do this. So I'm not entirely dexterous when it comes to cutting things out of card, but all you have to do is take a piece of card, uh, just make a drawing of the outline of whatever it is you're trying to put on the surface of the drink, and then cut it out. Now the idea here is that I'm going to put that over the surface of the drink. Let's just check this. I think what I might actually do is put this in my recently washed hands. I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the surface, and with a bit of luck, what we'll end up with is the shape of a shamrock. We'll see. Let's just add a little bit more. Let's take that off. Let's dust my hands down. Let's take that off as well. And you know what? I'm good with that. Let's tip you up. Tell me what you think. Is that a cool shamrock on the surface of the drink? I think that's not bad at all. 
And there we go. That one is called a shamrock slipper. There we go. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here for a second. Of our three cocktails, I can't actually drink this one. Uh, and that's because I have a very inconvenient uh, uh, allergy to milk and lactose. And of course, because of the Baileys and the cream that are in there, I can't, I can't touch that. But trust me when I say this is delicious. And by the way, if you like Baileys, you already know that that's delicious. And of course, with the additional Irish cream and the additional cream, it is just completely overwhelming in terms of its deliciousness. Right. Hands up to Baileys, says Jane. Uh, Karina, and also true. Hand is up, says Kevin. That's what I like to say. We've got hands up for Cheryl. Uh, everyone, my wife's hand is up, says Carl. Okay. Bruce loves Baileys and a few other Irish creams. We even got, and now we've got some like hands up emojis. This is pretty cool. Paul, single cream. No, it's up to you, Paul. Um, you can put single cream in, but if you want to put in double cream, go for it. And I think in the US, you call it what, light cream or heavy cream? I'm not sure. But yeah, it, just, just you decide, I would say, really, I think. Who's going to fight who for it? Oh, there's a fight going on over this drink. Bruce, it's a divorced cream because it was separated from the milk. Oh, nice. <laughs> Liking it. Right, uh, Jane, yours is the mouthwash. Oh, I see what's going on there. Nice shamrock. Thank you very much. It's great. Cheryl shamrock. Uh, Jeff, I have my chocolate powder in a small sh salt shaker. Actually, you know what? So do I. I have it in this. It's, uh, it's a little shaker, but the fact of the matter is, is that sometimes I find that too much of it comes out, which is why I sort of tipped it into my hand. But yeah, better to come out of that. Suzanne Nichols joined. How are you doing, Suzanne Nichols? Uh, Karina, is Jane knocking on the door yet? I, I'm like, any time now, I reckon that's going to be the case. Uh, uh, what's this? Richard Webb, so a bit of a geek question, but the prize library doesn't always tell the strength of the whiskey or the size of the bottle. Right, so uh, you might be right about that. So size of the bottles in the prize library, they're all 700 ml bottles. So they're all the, the standard UK size for a bottle. In terms of the strength, you're right. But if you click on any of the bottles in the prize library, it's got a description that comes up plus a picture. And I know I haven't put the strength there, uh, which I probably should have done now you mentioned it. But if you click on the picture and enlarge it, you can always read it off of the label. But, uh, but none of the whiskies are below 40, but there's quite a few cask strength in there, which I guess is what you're um, leaning towards. I'll try and update that in the coming weeks if I can, uh, Richard. Uh, we will definitely get to that. All right, where am I? Three cocktails down, a couple more facts coming up. People fighting over who's going to drink what. Sounds like a good night. Sounds like a good way to spend our evening. All right. Uh, so, another fact. Another fact for you. Um, so, the first St. Patrick's Day parade. So, you would think that because people in Ireland have been celebrating uh, St. Patrick's since the 1600s, that they would have had the first parade. But actually, the first traditional St. Patrick's Day parade began, where do you think? In the United States, of course, in America, that's where it happened. We've got records, apparently, that show that the first St. Patrick's Day parade was held on March the 17th in 1601. 1601. Wow. Over 400 years ago. So 1601 in a Spanish colony in what is now St. Augustine in Florida. Okay. So that's what it was. Uh, various other things and uh, bits and pieces here about uh, people marching in Boston in 1737, etc. But that's really the fact. That's the thing that I thought was really interesting. Uh, and there is a very good chance, along with some of the other things that I've told you this evening, that I could be asking you questions about that. Uh, last bit of whiskey information before we start diving into our giveaways and our quizzes and other bits and pieces that we've got going on. So, Jameson. I told you this is the biggest selling Irish whiskey in the world. It's also the number three biggest selling whiskey of any kind in the world with only Jack Daniels and Jim Beam, I think, is that sell more whiskey than, uh, than Jameson's Irish whiskey. In fact, in the top 10 of the world's top selling whiskies, the, these are figures going back to 2018, so I wasn't able to grab the 2019 figures just yet, but of the top 10 top selling whiskies in the world, none of them are Scottish. This is by quantity, by the way, not in terms of popularity, but in terms of quantity. So none of them are Scottish, uh, which I was quite surprised about. You've got quite a lot of Americans in there. You've got one Irish in there. I think you've got two or maybe even three Japanese whiskies in there. 
Interesting. Anyway, so as the third biggest selling whiskey in the world in 2018, how many bottles do you think Jameson sold? In actual fact, just for a bit of fun, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Type it in. How many bottles of whiskey do you think were sold in 2018 of Jameson's Irish whiskey? Give me your answers. Tell me what you think you've got going on. Uh, what's this? While we're waiting for some of your answers to come through, Richie Ward, the cocktails look gorgeous, but believe or not, I'm 45 and I've never had a cocktail. Richie, you've never had a cocktail. Well, you know, there's one way to change that, and it's never too late, uh, and that is to go and make one. Uh, make any one of these, or make any one of, you know, if you're a whiskey lover as well, then, then get yourself in there, get yourself in there. So what's Bruce said? Bruce reckons half a million bottles of Jameson's were sold in 2018. I'm going to tell you this, good guess, but not good enough. Any other guesses? Jane says 6.5 million bottles. Again, higher than Bruce, but nowhere near the actual total. Andy Campbell, 6 million bottles. Dave Chilton, 3 million bottles. I'm going to tell you in just a second. You've got about 10 seconds to have one last guess. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Carl says 12 million bottles. He is the closest, but still a way off. Here we go. Here's the deal. In 2018, Jameson's worldwide sold 90 that is nine zero, 90 million bottles of whiskey. 90 million bottles of whiskey. And if that is not a popular whiskey, then wow. So no saying that this isn't what people love. 90 million bottles of whiskey. Only Jack Daniels and Jim Beam sold more than that. Incredible. All right, so we've got to that part of our broadcast where we're gonna, um, we're gonna move into our giveaway for this week. So this week's giveaway, I'm giving away a bottle of Bush Mills. Now, if you are not a Dream Whiskies member, uh, it's fine, you can just play this for fun, you can play this for your own, uh, uh, own entertainment. Uh, but if you actually want to enter this competition uh, and you're not a member, you can actually sign up uh, on our site and there's a link in the description uh, and get a 30-day free trial. So even if you just want to mess around with us for, for 30 days and have a go at a few competitions, you can do that for free for 30 days. So there's a link in the description. It says sign up here for, for a free trial, and then you can have a go. But if not, don't worry about it. You can just do this for fun. You can enjoy it. Uh, try not to answer the questions here online because we don't want to be giving away the answers. But here are our four questions. Now, if you are in this and you want to have a go at winning that bottle of Bushmills, then remember there is a link in the description for this, that is our VIP spot prize giveaway. So you get your answers to these questions, you click on that link and it will all be there where you can tick off your answers and put your entry in. By the way, as Barry has already pointed out, I haven't updated the website, I will do it the moment this broadcast is over. So once we are finished with this broadcast, give me 30 seconds and I will update it and the new questions will be there and they will be these questions. Just out of interest, how many of you were going for it? You were still going for it, actually. Has this come before off? Maybe your comments are coming through slower than I realized. Paul eventually said 30 million. Robin went for 68. Jeff said 50 million. Actually, you know what? You were pretty close, Robin, 68 million. I mean, only 22 million bottles out, but you were the closest, I think. Here are our questions based on tonight's broadcast for our prize of a bottle of Bushmills Irish Whiskey. There you go, just in case you don't know what that looks like. All right, here we go. Question number one. Uh, the question number one is this. In what century was St. Patrick born? So in what century was he born? I told you all about when he was born, where he was born, being kidnapped, all that sort of stuff. But in what century was he born? That's question number one. Remember, you can answer all of this when you click through the link there. Uh, question number two. When was the first St. Patrick's Day parade? In fact, we've just been talking about that. It was the last fact that I gave you. When was the last St. Patrick's, or rather the first St. Patrick's Day parade? I was surprised how long ago it was, but it's a memorable day. Hopefully you remember it, and uh, you got the answer to that in question number three. What color, if you don't get this, wow. All right, here we go. What color was originally associated with St. Patrick? Okay, originally. We know what color is associated with St. Patrick now, but what color was originally associated with him? That is question number three. And question number four. How old was St. Patrick when he was kidnapped by Irish raiders from Britain? 
Okay, so how old was he? I told you that. If you don't remember, you might have to go back through the broadcast and check out the information. But those are our four questions. I'll go through them again in a second for you, but I wanted to just mark your card about a couple of things. One is this, is that we, as you know, uh, are now a free, uh, sorry, we are a VIP membership site, which means you have to sign up. You can have a free trial, but afterwards, if you want to stay with us, you have to sign up. Now, a lot of people weren't sure whether they wanted to try it or not, so we have a free competition running where you can actually win a year's subscription to our site. And that is free to enter that one. If you are already a member and you're already paying a subscription and you win that competition, we'll refund you your subscription. Uh, so if you've already paid a year up front, we'll refund that to you and give you a year. If you're paying by the month, we'll just make sure that you have a year's free subscription for us. So whether you are already a member or not, this is good for you. The link is also in our description. So all the links are in our description. You can click on that after the broadcast, you can go and enter, and you might even win a year. So I just want to let you all know about that. The second thing is this. Now, our broadcast seem to be you know, pretty popular. We have a nucleus of people, and we're trying to think of ways to make them more interactive. And all I want to know from you is, what do you, like, what do you think of the sound of this idea? We are thinking of uh, getting whiskies, which we will bottle into small miniatures, um, whiskies that hopefully you've not tasted before, and uh, doing a deal with you where we will sort of almost sell you a live, um, uh, like a live tasting ticket. And uh, what we want to do is we want to run live tasting experiences where we can all taste no matter where you are around the world. So the idea would be is that you pay whatever it is. We don't even know, we're just playing with this idea. And we will send you that whiskey in time for us to all log on at the same time, all do the tasting, all have the experience, all have a bit of fun. Do you like the sound of that as an idea or do you think it's a rubbish idea? If you think it's rubbish, say it's rubbish. That's cool because we don't want to waste any of your time or our time with it if you think it's rubbish. But if you like the idea of it and enough of you do, we will play that out and we will see how we can work forward with that. So I've come to the decision that I think that my comments keep getting stuck because I sort of get like no comments and then I get a load of comments that seem to be slightly behind the timeline. So I think I'm missing what some of you are saying. Anyway, let me recap. Questions for tonight's VIP spot prize giveaway where you can click on the link, go through and you can enter in there is this very quickly. Four questions. One, in what century was St. Patrick born? Two, when was, the, when was the first St. Patrick's Day parade? So let me say that again, because I nearly got caught on my teeth. Two, when was the first St. Patrick's Day parade? Three, what color was originally associated with St. Patrick? And four, how old was St. Patrick when he was kidnapped by Irish raiders from Britain originally? So those are our four questions. Uh, ah, some of your comments are now starting to come through. So Paul says he likes the sound of that. Uh, Jane saying she likes the sound of that. Thumbs up from Robin. Sherry saying 20 million, slightly behind Sherry, but it was 90 million in the end. Kieran saying he likes the sound of that. Jeff, what about giving out a list of ingredients we need to have on hand? Oh, what you mean for the cocktails or for the whiskey tastings? All right, uh, let me think about that as well. Sherry, me too. Barry, could be fun. Kieran, I like the sound of that. Sherry, I like the sound of that. So quite a lot of you like the sound of that. We're going to dig into that, try and explore it a bit further, and uh, I'll give you some more use on that next week. In the meantime... I would just like to thank you all for joining us tonight. I will be here again next week and I will just keep going. We're gonna keep doing this until we come out the other end of what is going on right now. I hope you all stay well, be sensible, look after yourselves, uh, make sure you're drinking whiskey, make sure you're having fun. Dream Whiskey is, is about fun. We wanna have fun with you. We're gonna keep our community going, but we will be thinking of you all. So thank you for joining us this week. For us, same time, same place, next week. Look forward to seeing you then. Keep well and, uh, and love to you all. Bye.